What's up YouTube? Chef Laurent Dagenet here. On this new segment I like to call Let Him Cook, we're gonna be doing deep dives on culinary scenes from your favorite TV shows and movies. Today, for episode one, we are starting with arguably the best cooking show of all time. You already guessed it, The Bear, to see if they cooked or not. Let's do this. Yeah. This episode contains spoilers, so if you haven't watched The Bear yet, this is your last chance to skip. And we start right now. Did you take my knife, Chef? Did you take my pot, Chef? <laughs> so in this scene, we can see Carm, who seems to be very upset because all the knives in the kitchen are just dull and he can't even find his own knife. Now, something like this would never really happen in a fine dining restaurant or a professional kitchen as all the chefs are responsible for their own equipment. But I could see this happen in your average restaurant for sure as usually a restaurant would provide the knives. And yeah, if a chef comes in a restaurant like this with his own knives, people maybe won't know that you're, ne you're never supposed to touch another chef's knife. So definitely something that could happen. Army, you're bleeding. Shit, man, stupid, dull ass knife. You're making me you're Fucking dead, Ibrahim. Ah, very classic scenario. You'll probably hear this throughout the whole series. Either words like corner, behind, or hot. Those are very like used terminology in all restaurants, just for for safety or just overall communication. As everyone's always very focused on what they're doing. So if you're walking behind someone carrying a very hot pot or a hot pan. It's just kind of like to make sure that uh, that person acknowledges the fact that you're behind and he has something hot. And uh, also when you're like crossing corners, obviously as you can't really see the other, the other angle, people will just yell a corner. Just to make sure that everyone uh, knows you're coming. So in, in this scene, I think it would be Karm's fault because uh, Ibrahim did say corner, but Karm was concerned with his finger cut, didn't listen, and then boom, collision happened. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Corner, ha, huh, behind. Let's go. I get it, you have a short man's complex. You can barely reach over this fucking table, right? Is this why you have the tattoos and your cool little scars and you go out and you take your smoke breaks? It's fun, isn't it? But here's the thing, you're terrible at this. Damn. What an absolute piece of shit, this guy. So in this scene, we can see, I guess, the executive chef going over to Carm, who's a CDC, to give him shit, because when the sauce was broken, and tell him that he hired some shitty staff it's more of like the old school old school way of doing things like more of like the military approach like old french brigade i feel like i have mixed feeling about this obviously this one's a very um being personal but for me like my second job in a restaurant was in this french bistro with a french chef who worked with bernard was one of the craziest french chef of all time and uh every shift i would walk in there kind of like tail between my legs always gonna be like I always knew it was gonna be like a terrifying service every time. But I do think there's some positive in there. For me, I think it made me a better chef for sure, but even like a better person outside of the kitchen. It for sure taught me a lot about discipline, about uh, cleanliness. It, it for sure gave me a better work ethic as well. Most of the time, if a chef will push you this much, it's probably because he really believes in your potential and he wants to see uh, how much he can push you. What, what, are, they, what are you capable of? And um, it's definitely a case of tough love, but I do think that deeply you can grow out of this and become a very good chef. Is this for everyone? Maybe not. If you can't handle the pressure, maybe not a place you want to work. But for me, I think it served me good. And um, as much as it seems to be like very, maybe like on the bully side, it, it is what it is. You know, for me, it worked out. So, but yeah, definitely something that's less and less common. I feel like it's, like I said, like the old, old French way maybe, but uh, Maybe because of social media, you know, people don't want to be exposed as the as the ultimate bully. Definitely still out there. Definitely still out there. Fuck brunch. Fuck brunch. We're gonna get rocked tonight. Oh, huh? absolutely fucking destroyed, yeah. There's two things that I find very interesting. First is both Sydney and Carm are saying fuck brunch, because for some weird reason, I guess it just makes sense, but like most chefs just fucking hate brunch service. I personally never been a fan of brunch, even like I don't I don't even go to brunch or I never I've never been working in a place where they did have brunch or I made sure I was not working that shift because I don't know, it's like a, is it maybe like cause it's just like you're fucking putting on days on poached eggs or just because you're just I just get I don't know. I've never been a fan of brunch, so very accurate. Most chefs don't fuck with brunch. The second thing I find very interesting in the scene is the container in which Karma is drinking his water. 
the classic daily plastic container. Most people think it's just like a trend in kitchens, but it's honestly because you should never be drinking out of a glass in the kitchen because if you break it, there's gonna be glass in the food, there's gonna be glass everywhere, and then you have to drop all your mise en place and start over. So always drink out of plastic. So it's not only a trend, it's just because you never wanna have any glass in the kitchen. That's the reason, but yeah, very accurate. Uh, okay, um, I, uh, uh. So in this scene, we can see absolute chaos because Sydney apparently uh, at the app, whatever they were using, she left the pre-order option on, which uh, resulted in fucking bills puking out of the printer. Been there and uh, it's, you know, for me, it's like there's two ways of going with this. It's like either like you, uh, you just go like full set mode and like get the bills out of the way and kind of like, pump out some food or you just panic and crawl into fetal position and uh, and cry. Even if you're freaking out inside, just don't show it. Just deal with the bills. Just give some clear orders to your to your kitchen staff. And I'll be fine. But in this case, honestly, I think no one can get through it. Absolute fucking chaos. And I hope I'll never uh, have to live something like that because that's fucked. And she's not cooking. They're not cooking right now. We have Tim and Jill Perry. They're both Elmhurst High School teachers. And according to Jill's Instagram, it's always been her dream to dine at a three-star restaurant, and they have been, quote, saving up for this. Do not drop a check. I want to blow their fucking minds. Chef! Yeah. Get back to work! Fuck you, Garrett! Yes, yeah, Chef, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> now, in this scene, the good old pre-service meeting, usually it's about to go over uh, new courses in the menu, to go about like the wine pairings, sometimes to go over some things that need to be improved, or any like reservation, like for uh, allergies or restrictions. But in this case, what I really thought was interesting is to see that they're even doing deep dives on their on the customer's Instagram to see uh, what they do for work. If there's like uh, anything that's special or worth mentioning, or worth like uh, I guess preparing for the clients. So that's something you probably definitely only see in three mission star restaurants. But uh, very nice touch for sure. A bit creepy also, you know, it's like, I feel like it's weird to go over people's Instagram before they get, uh, they come for dinner, but I, I've heard of this before, so it's uh, definitely a real thing. Yeah. Three, going to 21. Pick up two hamachi, please. Yeah. Eight, walking in five. Triple check five, please, white chocolate allergy. Yeah. Every night you make somebody's day. In this scene, we can see probably the most organized expo station I've seen in my whole life. I mean, I've never worked in a place that was like disorganized. I guess every restaurant have their own ways of doing things. Here you can see like all the bills, you have like all the details of like the name of the customer, the person who punched the table, the time. You have like all the different dishes on the menu lined up. She's taking man notes, she's moving things. She's just like constantly like just like calling stuff to the kitchen staff. Uh, again, I've never worked in a place like this, but definitely seems like a very good system. And I guess overall this will reduce a very strong percentage of, of mistakes to happen. So you can never be too organized in the kitchen. So that's, that looks legit to me. Approved. Freezer and all I have are waffles and pizza. This is amazing. Angie Terry loves this shit. After the service, everyone from the restaurant goes to party in uh, Sydney's apartment. Everyone's dancing, have a good time. And then uh, chef's hungry. They go check out the freezer. All they have is egg or waffles. Uh, sometimes people think that like all the chefs are only like eating like fried onion food like for every meal Then they come back home after a long day and like pull out some foie gras and some caviar from the fridge Well, no most chefs are also fucking down with pizza and hot dogs and poutine and whatever fucking fast food you can imagine I personally like you know order Uber Eats like five times a week because I'm a fucking maniac I had my fair share of uh, drunken pasta session at 3 in the morning coming back from the club Putting what was there in the fridge and you know making it good, so I like that. What are you doing? I poured it in front of him. Why the fuck is it back in here? Well, well we're a restaurant. I back and serve the food. What the it. fuck is this? Right. Come on. What are you thinking? That's one of my favorite scenes in the whole season. So right now we just saw a uh, fact played by the homie Big Dog Maddie Madison taking some uh, some bowls with a broth through a table, pouring them. And uh, instead of leaving the balls to the clients, the customers, he just heads back in the kitchen. When Carm sees it, he's freaking out because he's what the fuck are you doing here back with the balls? Uh, anyway, it's very fucking funny. Now, I don't think that's something you would see happening in a restaurant of this level. I mean, they just opened, but it's like, you know, they're aiming for permission star. So I don't think they'd be, they would be willing to risk 
having someone like Fak who's like playing the maintenance guy in this uh, in the series going to the table to do this uh, this kind of like serving task. So now, is it impossible? No, you always want to give uh, a chance to your staff to to get better and tackle new tasks. So definitely not something that's impossible. All that being said, very funny scene because knowing that Maddie is the only actual chef working on the on this cast uh, makes it even funnier. So shout out, big dog. Oh, off to a great start. The bear. What a great show. Did they cook? Oh boy, they sure as hell did. Shout out to the cast and Shelter Production for putting together such an amazing show. Let us know in the comments which culinary movies or series you'd like to see me review. Please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next episode of Let Them Cook. Peace. <laughs> Fuck you, Garrett. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs>